Very nice. Well done. It's very so uh, again. Uh, how long time do you suggest that we do the meditation? Fifteen minutes. What about to do fifteen minutes instead?
about to make it 15 minutes. Okay, very well. So let's sit in my comfortable meditation posture. Make sure your back is erect. Put things down. We will meditate with open balance. You can refer to our previous meeting and then on last week where I explained meditation posture in detail. So we'll be building it on that knowledge. So we are sitting in a comfortable meditation posture with the back mirror side cast down. We can blink as much as we want, but we don't look here and there. And we can make the first determination in our mind, goes this way. From now on, for 15 minutes, I will get a good unmasking. I'm going to do it for enhancement without any movement. From now on, for 15 minutes, I will make it a muscle. Every day for an appointment, without any movement. From now on, for 15 minutes, I will make it a muscle. Every day for an appointment, without any movement. And with that determination, we can check the other analysis, the correct use of clutch and the support from the way. We are on the way of our building. I'm changing. You come to me with a four hair. How many? Hello. 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 We allow all of the monster to flesh to our Okay. 
Something else to get about that. Enjoy the display then. Thanks for watching this video. And we have established in the mind and blue. We can share our peace with other than the end. We can start in our world. Most of us in our mind. 
we can do this one and then we can only go on. And we allow all of the DM in which we could enjoy at least as much food as we are enjoying the night time. And then all of the DM. And we should do M2. And we should do M3. Oh, yes, it's bad. I'll pass it at any time now. And I'll follow the room. And there's a bit of a room. Do and do. And we'll set the other element. We can see. All the land in this kind of way, we can do. I want to be in the sun I'll just plan my own. Do it in three. All of the room, and put it in there. Do we want to do it?
now because the time for the system is going. Let's make the last determination and now my Facebook screen. From now on, I don't follow the from now on. I don't always be following. From now on, I will always be following. And with that determination, we can slowly run through change the way of arms with him. When we change the way of arms, we can stay for one more minute. Hearing each other and enjoy the peace, we can do meditation and launch our mind. There we go. Okay, let's move on to our book. I will be sharing with you the screen and maybe we'll be continuing our discussion about on the next. So the last time we were talking more about the, the ultimate nature of consciousness. We were discussing how the law of dependent origination or Patikya Samuppada is a consists of the ultimate realities and how it is dependent on ignorance and the power of Seattle's idea that it is necessary to see the ultimate nature of the mind and the body in uh, the abhidhamic sense so that we can make any progress in the Boston. Today, we'll be looking more at some concepts and be looking at the end of the world. So there will come a time because when the great ocean dries up, evaporates and is no more. So the Buddha in here uh, will be discussing this uh we're discussing the sutta that Gula Bhagdha Sutta or the clock Bound Sutta. And the Buddha here will be discussing the end of the world. The intention is to show that everything is impermanent. So it's not really necessarily um, teaching on geology or um, astronomy or some predictions into the future. Although what the Buddha here says may be true and maybe uh, reliable, it is not the intention to educate the minds on some theoretical concepts. The idea here is that the Buddha will um, produce or the Buddha will help the monks produce some which means running blank. So in the Buddha's teachings, we see this very interesting concept of trembling, sangveda. It is trembling by fear. 
that comes when the person realizes the suffering of the world. And the Sandega also speeds up and boosts the enthusiasm and energy and effort of the person who is working hard to become enlightened. Because as the person realizes the nature of death and suffering in the world, the person makes more suffering, sorry, uh, makes more effort to resolve that suffering and also to uh, get free from all suffering and thus achieve nirvana. So uh, the Buddha's teaching here about the end of the world doesn't have to be taken literally. Although we can, and that's what the brains do, and uh, that's what I would definitely um, suggest that you do, it is not the, the essential point of this Buddha's teaching. The essential point is that you realize that suffering is inevitable and that uh, the only thing that makes sense is to work hard for our liberation. So uh, here we see that Baal's Theodore is looking uh, deep into these conceptual teachings from the Buddha and explains that the world will be destroyed in one of three ways, either by fire, water, or wind. A hundred thousand years before any of the three kinds of destruction, there will be a deity, which is known as uh, the world in martial, but here Loka Buha literally means the person who selects the world. So Buha here means, here indicates somebody who is collecting, Loka is the world, but uh, in this case we are talking about the living beings. So uh, a huge, huge deity will be running um, across the world and will be encouraging people to practice the four divine abidance, that means loving kindness, compassion, altruistic joy, and, uh, and uh, equanimity. Here we have a sympathetic joy, all the way until the attainment of challenge, and also advise the people to take care of their parents and have respect to lost the other people. And believe it or not, according to our scriptures, uh, all of those beings will somehow do that. The Seattle does not believe that it's all of the beings, and he is putting forth his own idea. We will get uh, to that soon. So this is what the deity does, but it seems that it's not just one deity, but it seems that there are several of them. Kama Vachara Deva. So, because we have the word Deva, we know that there are several of them. Because Deva is a plural, singular would be Deva. And uh, we learn here some details about them from the Sudhi Mantra. We learn that. Uh, we learned that these are supposed to be Brahmas, Brahmas who are anagamas or non-returned. That means Brahmas who have achieved third level of enlightenment. We distinguish four levels of enlightenment. And these Brahmas who will come and collect the world so that the people are kind to each other, they are uh, they are enlightened. They are enlightened to the third level of enlightenment. And as all other Brahmas, uh, there is nothing special about this. Uh, these Brahmas have power of a psychic, the psychic power of knowing the future. So they are able to know what's coming in the future. And because they know that within a hundred thousand years, the world is going to be destroyed, they come and warn the people. So they warn the people based on their own knowledge. That they themselves got to their second power. So those who will be unable to develop jhana, 
um, because of their past uh, wholesome karma or because of their insufficient uh, wholesome karma to develop jhana, they will at least be born in the heaven. So the sloka Yuha uh, Brahmas, they will be collecting the people and suggesting to them that they will practice. Um, kindness, some of them will develop jhana through that and be born in Brahma world. Some of them won't, so they will be born in the deity realms. And in those deity realms, they will actually come to meditation so that they are born as Brahmas. Then after some time, it is a cloud, and then there will be rain. So uh, here we get some um, uh, unnecessary uh, mistake. It's not really a serious mistake. Um, Especially if you are set to you hope to achieve nibbana before this happens. So um, the the mention here is that the rain that is going to gradually destroy the world will be happening not only in this planet but in the um, but in the one billion of the one billion world systems. So here we have 100,000 million, but that is not really accurate. Bodhisattva Sahasa. Bodhisattva Sahasa. So those of you who are from India, and that's uh, India or Sri Lanka, for you this word Bodhi is very familiar. But for the translator, it's not. So the word Bodhi is uh, 10 million. It is not 1 million. So 10 million times 100 is a thousand million. And thousand million times 1,000, which is sasa, is one billion. Counting in the, um, in, the, uh, in the UK way. Right? Otherwise in the US, uh, in the US mathematics, it would be one trillion. We count it in the UK way, and uh, I'm from Europe, and in the Czech Republic, we follow the UK way also. So we would call it one billion. That is ten, uh, one times 10 to the power of 12, okay, 12 zeros. So that's the correct number, not this one, which I have highlighted in red. So uh, there will be um, one billion world systems suffering from heavy rain, okay. but people will be sowing crops. However, when that crop uh, becomes enough high, so that something can be done with it, uh, there will be no more rain. Instead, there will be heat, and those plants will dry up, so there will be nothing to eat. Humans will die, just like the, uh, just like the animals, and also the deities will it on earth. Because according to this explanation, the deities on earth are dependent on flowers and fruits. Now you need to be careful. Seattle Paul, Seattle's books are a little bit dangerous if we want to be accurate. He will take an, a reference, he will provide you an amazing reference, which is very hard to get and Probably nobody knows it or nobody can give it to you. But right after he gives you reference, he will add some information which he does not uh, substantiate. He does not provide any reference to that. So, for example, this idea that the earth devas will die, where is that in the scriptures? It is not mentioned in this reference that he's providing for, uh, for whatever it is. Oh, that's yes, it's a limit. So these um uh these uh index numbers when they're in Italy, they're actually providing reference to book. So yes indeed, God is Satasasa and Takavala is in the book. That's true, and we get reference to that. But there is no reference for the idea that the earth of us will die. Or that they are living on uh, flowers and fruits. The reference is not provided here. Is it in the scriptures? Hard to tell, but we don't get reference in this book. So they are reborn in the devil world. Yes, the humans are reborn in the devil world. 
and the humans as babies in the devil world will develop messiness. So they will be meditating on colors, white, blue, orange, or yellow, or red, and uh, they will achieve jhana, and then when they die, they are born to the Brahma world. The water in the world, uh, in the meantime, uh, evaporates, and the fish and other animals in that water will die. Then, uh, and because they're a good karma, they will be also born in the heaven, they will practice jhanas, and then be born again in, in the Brahma world. Now we are going to a very interesting idea, which I just did not find in the scriptures. And again, of course, the Sierra does not provide any evidence for that. So Sierra explains, Sierra provides reference to the scriptures that those who have wrong views are born in hell. Well, that's not really difficult to find in the scripture because the Buddha speaks about it again and again. But what the Sierra does not substantiate is the idea that those who are born in hell or those who have wrong views will not be born in the heavens, instead they will be born in the world interest is hell. So the Sierra again here provides a reference, but that reference does not tell you that those who have wrong view will be born in the interest is hell or better more accurate is Lokam Tarikamira. That this reference just explains to you what are long Lokam Tarikamirayas. It only explains to you the nature of these worlds. It doesn't really say that those who have wrong view at the end of the world will be born in the Lokam Tarikamira. So we still have our big question. What will happen at the end of the world with those who do not get born in them? Or will all of them be born in heaven? Or as Mogul Siado, the very famous Mogul Siado from Myanmar suggests, those who do not deserve to be born in heaven, will they be born in some of the other world systems outside of these one billion world systems that have to be destroyed? We so we get here an additional idea. We have no idea where did the Seattle read it, where did he get it from? Is it his own idea? Or did his teacher tell it to him? Or is this what some British people believe? We don't really know. And we will find this kind of phenomenon in the power of Seattle's books again and again. So we have to be watchful. After a long period without rain, by the time all beings have been reborn elsewhere, a second sun appears. The first sun dried up the pond and killed the turtles and fish. Now the second sun, uh, the second sun will be uh, appearing together with the first one. So there is there are two suns uh, visible in uh, in the sky. As one sun sets, the other rises. So there is no more telling night from the day. The world is continuously scorched by the heat of the two suns. Two suns are working um, day and night. Trees and smaller rivers dry up. So then the third sun will appear and the uh, large rivers will dry up. Uh, the Sierra is providing here uh, the list of those large uh, rivers and the uh, footnotes. But of course, there are many more large rivers than those in India. Then uh, the uh, four great lakes with the fourth sun will also disappear. Then uh, there will be fifth sun, uh, which will dry up the seas. Sixth sun uh, will um, burn uh, the great mountain Meru or Sineru. And then the seventh sun will appear and it will 
uh, burn everything. Then powerful winds will carry the fire uh, right up to the Brahma world. So in some uh, in some periods of uh, destruction of the world, uh, the Brahma worlds up to the first Brahma world are destroyed. Now let's summarize Brahma worlds, which are altogether twenty. Let's summarize them into eight based on the jhana that's necessary to be attained for rebirth. So we, we distinguish eight jhanas based on the most common Buddha's returning of jhanas. And four of the jhanas are so-called material jhanas, and four of them are so-called material jhanas. So when you achieve these jhanas, if you can maintain the attainment by the time of your death, you will be born in a Brahma world, that's equivalent to each of these eight jhanas. So the first four um, uh, jhanas result in the uh, rebirth in one of the 16 Brahma worlds. The higher four jhanas result in birth in one of the, or reappearance, contrary, in one of the uh, highest four Brahma worlds. Now, what can be destroyed is only that what's natural. You can really destroy the mind, at least uh, not uh, in the way that you have described here. So only up to the 16th Brahma world, or to simplify, only up to the 4th Brahma world, it is possible that the world will be destroyed. When... Uh, uh, when uh, will the highest Brahma world, highest material Brahma world, be destroyed? Well, it will be destroyed once every, that should be, once every 64 destructions of the world. Every single destruction of the world destroys the world through fire. And there will be only the first Brahma world that will be destroyed with it. Every fourth destruction will destroy also the second level of the Brahma world. Every third, uh, sorry, every uh, sixteen uh, destruction of the world will destroy also the third world of the Brahma. And every sixty-four destruction of the world, even the fourth world of the Brahma will be destroyed. Suppose then he could, a dog was cloth bound and to a strong post or pillar was bound close. It would keep going round and circling round that same post or pillar. With the idea of cloth is explained here. Uh, cloth here uh, is uh, apparently a kind of stick uh, that, is, um, that is attached to a dog's neck. So then when the neck is running, then this uh, stick beats the legs and the feet of this dog. And so the dog does not run because the dog does not want to suffer the pain of the so-called clog that um, beats its legs or feet. And um, so suppose that this dog that cannot run because of the stick bound at its neck uh, suppose that this dog is bound with strong hope or a pillar. And then uh, the dog wants to go away because it's not happy there. So it will be going around and circling around, around and around and around. So this is a simile for somebody who is not enlightened yet. For anybody who's not enlightened, for anybody who's just going round and round uh, due to their ignorance, so that means they're born, they get old, ill, and die, and again, and again, and again, and again. Uh, they are like this dog that's running around that post and cannot really get anywhere. So the Buddha will be talking here, or the uh, Sera will be explaining here the Buddha's teachings on an uneducated person, who is a person who does not understand the Dhamma. 
someone who is uneducated, in and ignorant of both the theory and practice of the Dhamma, someone who possesses neither learning our Dhamma nor attainment of the Dhamma. The uneducated person is one who needs to be educated about the four noble truths. So uh, the four noble truths are here a little bit explained. And then uneducated person has not practiced systematically and so has not discerned, he has not understood any of these things either. That means any of the four noble truths. And so has attained no path or portion, which are the cultivation and culting. Okay. Uh, culmination of uh, the path towards the Bama. And uh, so because the person has not uh, discerned, uh, not understood the form of the goods of what it is the dear Paul, an uneducated person. All right, so again, about ordinary person. So ordinary person Putujana is somebody who is not enlightened, even at the first level of enlightenment. Now, according to the scriptures, it means somebody who, who is one out of many who do not follow the rules, who do not follow the five rules, or even the, uh, the eight rules. It is uh, ordinary person is somebody who is not uh, really interested in the Buddha's teachings and somebody who's following some other teaching, some other philosophy. So, uh, for example, a person who's following greed, hatred, uh, delusion, conceit, wrong view, and fearlessness. Uh, uh, ordinary uh, person also may have several identity views, several ideas about their self, whether uh, after death, they will be eternal, or whether after their death, their self or soul will be perished, will perish. Um, there are several ways how to uh, how to become a victim of island of abuse. The ordinary person looks up to many teachers whose teachings are metaphysical and contrary to the Dhamma. So this is something explained in uh, uh, the sutta, in one of the later Sutta Nipata uh, discourses, where the Buddha explains that a person uh, that a person who's not educated, uh, normal person, worldly, is running from a teacher to teacher, whereas a person who's an arahant does not really have to uh, run from a teacher to teacher. He believes that even the stream and church do not really change a teacher. We learned this from this. Uh, we learned this from. I think that Saratana Sutta, where uh, we learned that uh, stream mentors um, will never come with six things, and uh, so their stream mentor will never kill mother, kill father, shed the Buddha's blood, kill an arahant, um, or with the Sangha, with the community of monks, but also the stream entry will never change from the teacher, namely the Buddha, to any other teacher. So uh, already a stream enter will not uh, change to any other teacher. All right, then the ordinary person also accomplishes many Dhamma formations. So the person makes a lot of actions by the mind, speech, or body based on their ignorance. They may be born in various worlds. Uh, they are attached to the sexual pleasures. And they also, uh, yes, ordinary persons are attached to sensual pleasures and uh, uh, ordinary people or non enlightened people are still hindered by many hindrances. These five hindrances are gradually removed by enlightenment. For example, the first level of enlightenment removes the hindrance of doubt. Who does not see the noble ones? So the Buddha here will be explaining 
uh, a very interesting point, which is related to Brahma and to the society, and also to the Buddhist society and the value of monks. So, according to the Buddha's teachings, Uh, Putu, uh, from the word Putujana, that means the person who is not enlightened. Uh, there, this um, first part, Putu, means that the person is separate. So, uh, according to our scriptures, those who are not enlightened, they are those who are separate from enlightenment. They are those who are separate from understanding those who have achieved enlightenment. All right. So we distinguish in the commentaries two kinds of non enlightened people. And they are the so called Anhapu Jana, that is uh, an ordinary person who is so called blind. And then we have um, here written, well, we call him Kalyana Putujana. You can see that information in this book. Uh, Kalyana means good, Anha means blind, Anha Putujana, blind person, enlightened. And uh, then we have Kalyana Putujana. And Kalyana Putujana, um, or here uh, we learn uh, that he or she is called Nyanena. The Sahi, other Sahi would be he or she does not see. The Sahi means he or she does see. So, uh, Anha Putujana does not really see the form of the throats or the Buddha's teachings and impermanence, unsatisfactory enough. So, whereas Kalyana Putujana, the noble uh, person who is not enlightened at all, has very good knowledge and very, very good understanding. And very strong faith in the Buddha's teachings. So uh, here we get the story from the Buddha's time when a monk named Bhaktali, as he was meditating, he was actually watching the Buddha's appearance. The Buddha explained to him uh, that the Buddha's um, uh, body. Uh, that the Buddha's body is not worth uh, uh, worth in watching. Instead, uh, Bhaktali, Venerable Bhaktali should uh, work with the mind, achieve enlightenment, and through his enlightenment, Venerable Bhaktali would be uh, would be fully understanding the Buddha, and the Buddha goes back seeing the Buddha. So why do you, Bhaktali, this stinking body want to see? Whoever Bhaktali, the Dhamma sees, me will see. Whoever me sees, he will the Dhamma see. Who is the Dhamma sees? Is there anything? The last paragraph for today. For by the Dhamma seeing Bhaktali, one me sees, me seeing one the Dhamma sees. So it's true that it should be possible to see the Dhamma through looking at the Buddha. But this uh, is not the intention, because Bhaktari was really in danger of committing suicide. So the Buddha wanted uh, to encourage Bhaktari to continue in his practice and uh, dedicate his time to meditation. But then Bhaktari uh, concentrated on the meditation practice and very soon achieved a one needs also to see the noble state of the noble ones and the things pertaining to their noble state. That is, one needs to have known and seen the impermanent suffering and love felt of ultimate uh, materiality and mentality through meditation, and uh, one needs to achieve attain to the Dhamma that the noble ones have attained as well. Uh, that means one needs to become an Arahant. So, through becoming an Arahant, through understanding the Dhamma, one happens to see the noble ones. One happens to understand their nature. All right.
So some of you maybe have noticed that I'm extremely kind of angry. It's actually relatively late in here. I had a, uh, I've had a uh, busy day today. So um, I also see that we don't have anyone at all in our meeting except our most kind organizer. So if there are any questions in the chat box, I'd like to ask Mr. Sumino for example. Just if there are any questions, anything unclear, you can write in the comments in YouTube, and uh, then from these comments, uh, we will um, uh, we will see the comments, we will try to understand them as questions, so that I can answer your questions, and uh, we can uh, happily continue studying at this very a uh, very um, rich book, of this book very rich in uh, quotes and information from the scriptures. Seems like we have no questions. So it was a pleasure to see everybody, and I hope to see. Uh, I hope to uh, continue with you all also next week on. We are meeting on Wednesdays. Wednesday at about 9 p.m. of daytime time, which is 8.30 in Myanmar. And uh, it should be, yes, and it is 7.30 p.m. in India. So all of you are most welcome to join us in Zoom, so that it's also easier for you to ask me a question, and I can make sure that I will answer it. It's better if you see them for our next meeting. And when I finish uh, reading from the book, we can look at them live. So please collect the questions and wait for me until the next week, uh, our uh, video meeting. Instead of writing those questions for me, do not write those questions for me. Instead, just Keep them in uh, your other software, notebook, or whatever else you have on your computer. And next week during our meeting, you can ask me those questions during our next meeting next week when we are. Thank you very much. So, thank you everybody for coming today. May you be happy, may you be healthy and will be successful in everything you do.